What's up YouTube, it's your rep, back at it again with another video. Unfortunately, at the beginning of this month, April of 2022, the greatest way to buy cryptocurrency in the history of the planet, the Gemini API, raised their fees from 0.1% all the way up to 0.2%. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys the new cheapest way to make recurring purchases of Bitcoin or any cryptocurrency that is offered at, drum roll please, brrr, FTX US. So if you guys watch the end of the video, I'll be covering FTX US's fees. I'll show you guys how to make recurring payments. If you're familiar with the channel, you probably already know how to do this. I'll talk about some of the things that I don't really like about FTX. And then finally, I'll be giving you guys my opinion and letting you know what I plan to do moving forward. Go down below and smash the like button for the cheapest way to buy any cryptocurrency in 2022 and let's level up your brains. <laughs> All right, guys, so the whole reason that we're having to do this video is that if you look down here on the Gemini API fee schedule, you can see that very unfortunately, Gemini has increased the first tier of their maker fee to 0.2% instead of 0.1%. You now have to spend more than $10,000 in a month to get back to that 0.1% maker fee. And even if you do that, the first $10,000 that you spend are gonna be this 0.2% maker fee. So really all in all, the FTX fees like we'll see in a second here are gonna be better for everyone regardless regardless of how much you're spending every month. And let's be honest, most of us are not spending $10,000 on Bitcoin every single month, maybe once in a while, but definitely not a regular occurrence. And so if you do wanna get the lowest fees possible, like we're gonna get in this video, the FTX method is gonna be the best for you. So let's go head over to the FTX fees section here. And you can see here, FTX fees, 30 day volume zero, maker fees 0.1%. That's what we were getting before. And so now when we implement this FTX US API here, we're gonna be getting that again. And then as far as withdrawals go, we can come down here to crypto fees and we can see there are no deposit fees for blockchain transfers and FTX US pays the withdrawal blockchain fees for all tokens except for ERC20 ETH and Omni tokens on withdrawal. And so while this is going to be exactly the same for those of us that are dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin and moving that money off of the exchanges and into our own Bitcoin hardware wallets, if you are using an ERC20 token or ETH, you might want to double check the math here and confirm with yourself that you're actually saving money on this 0.1% maker fee because Gemini's 0.2% maker fees are still very low. And so you'll have to see for yourself, you know, how much am I getting charged for the gas for withdrawing my Ethereum from FTX? And is it worth it to actually just go over to Gemini, get those 0.2% maker fees, and then take advantage of Gemini's 10 free transfers a month, even on Ethereum, at least as of the recording of this video. All right, guys, so next up, we're going to go over to Notion, this Notion page that I created for us here to manage the FTX code. And I'll leave the link to it down in the description, of course. The first thing that we're going to want to do here is come to this FTX layer.zip and we're just going to download this to our desktops. And then if we scroll down, we'll see there's the function for buying and selling Bitcoin or any crypto that's offered on FTX. So next, let's head over to console.aws.amazon.com and you'll see they have a new layout here if you've been following the channel for a while. If you're not familiar with AWS, I'll leave a link up in the cards to a video that I did a while ago on how we use AWS for a lot of these cryptocurrency tutorials on this channel. And in that video, I explain what AWS is and why it's a really great tool to use for dollar cost averaging Bitcoin just every single day or on whatever schedule that you want to dollar cost average any cryptocurrency on. So if you guys are familiar with the channel, you've probably seen this like a hundred times now, but if this is your first time, you're going to come up here to the search bar and you're just gonna type in Lambda and you're gonna click on Lambda right here, run code without thinking about servers. Click over here on the left-hand side to layers. You'll click on create a layer. You'll call this maybe FTX US layer YouTube demo. You can call yours whatever you want. This is basically just the FTX layer and we'll hit upload on zip file. Click on this FTX layer.zip that you downloaded. We're going to choose x86.64 and we're going to choose Python 3.8 as the runtime. And then we're going to hit create. So we've successfully created our layer. Now we're going to come up here to this Lambda link just to get back to the homepage. And then we'll click on functions over on the left hand side and we'll create our new function. We'll call this function FTX crypto buyer to demo. We'll click on Python 3.8 here, x86.64. And then we'll scroll down here to create function. All right, we're going to delete all the code that's here. We're going to come back over to the API scripts. We're going to copy this buy sell crypto code, come back over to Lambda, paste the code here. And then if we scroll down, the first thing we're going to do is click on add a layer. We're going to click on custom layers. We're going to choose from our custom layers and we're going to click on that FTX US layer YouTube demo that we just created version one and click on add. So we're back on the code now and we're going to need to link our specific FTX US accounts with this script by giving it our API key and an API secret. So let's head over to FTX and see how we can do that. We'll be 
here on FTX US and we'll click up on our names in the top right hand corner and we'll come on down to API here. You can scroll down and you can see that I have actually already created an API key, but I'm going to create a new one for the purposes of this video. So we'll come down here to create API key. I made this a little bigger, so hopefully you can see it. The first one here is going to be your API key. You're going to copy this, come back over to your function and paste it here in the quotes. And then you'll come back over here to API secret and you'll hit copy and you'll put it here in the quotes for secret. So just make sure that key is corresponding to key, right? And secret is corresponding to secret over here. So now if we go back to FTX US, we'll click on close. And then here we can edit the permissions of the API key if we want to, if we wanted to enable this for withdrawals in the future or something like that, we can change those permissions here and then we can hit close again. So right now this API key that we just created is permissioned for trading and withdrawals on all sub accounts. And just know that if you missed your API secret there, you're not gonna be able to get it again, but you can always just create a new API key by clicking on this button and you know generating a new API key, hitting close. And then if you ever wanna delete one, you can just come over here to the trash can and delete your API keys. It's very important you never share your API keys with anyone, even me. I'm never gonna ask you for your API keys because if you do share them with someone, that person is going to be able to make trades on your behalf. And if you do have withdrawals enabled on your API keys, they're going to be able to withdraw your crypto from your FTX exchange into whatever wallet that they want. So it's very important, never share your API keys with anyone. If we come over here now to the AWS function, we'll see changes have not yet been deployed. And this means anytime we change the code, we need to deploy the code so that AWS knows which version of the code to use. So let's click deploy here. And if we wait a second, we should see that this changes deployed message goes away and it will say successfully updated the function FTX crypto buyer YouTube demo. So now let's go ahead and click on test for the first time and we'll call this event name. We'll just call it test and we'll hit save. And so now any future time that we hit test, it's going to run the script that we wrote here, which hopefully you can read the script here. The symbol that we're going to be buying is BTC USD. If for example, you wanted to buy ETH USD, you would just use ETH USD or whatever symbol that you wanted to buy that's available on FTX. And then for US dollar amount, you're going to make this whatever the dollar amount that you want to buy is. I'm doing 20 in this case, and we'll see how that works in a second here when I run the function. And then for order type, obviously buy is buy and sell here would be sell. So let's head back over to FTX and just look at orders so that I can show you that I have no open limit orders right now. But then if I come over here and I hit test order sent, I can come back over to orders and you can see that there is now a BTC USD limit buy for 0 0.0005 Bitcoin at 40,075, which is about the spot price of BTC USD. Yeah, so 40,075 is just below 40,080. You can see that I have a limit buy here up on the chart. And so whenever that price falls to 40,075, my order should be filled. And while we're waiting here, we can see that 0.0005 times 40,075 is $20.03. So it's not exactly $20. And we'll see why that is in a second here. I'm actually just going to cancel this order now because it was taking too long for it to fill. And I'll show you why that $20 situation, it was not exactly $20. Let's say I change this order size to be eight decimal places. So this should be an order size of eight decimal places. I'm going to hit deploy because I made a change. I'm going to hit test here and we should see that my order size was 0 0.00049903. But if we go back to FTX, we'll see that it posted a limit order for 0 0.0004. It actually rounded us down and you can't actually ever post a limit order that's more than four decimal places here on FTX US. And if we do this math here, 0 0.0004 times 40,078, we'll see that that's actually only $16. And the discrepancy here is that if I come back to Lambda functions and I round the price that I'm giving it to four decimal places like we have it at just in the default script, and we obviously hit deploy again to deploy our changes. And now we go ahead and hit test again. We'll see that it now posted an order for 0 0.0005, which is closer to that number that we actually wanted. So unfortunately, you know, we wanted $20 USD amount. What we're actually getting is 0 0.005 times 40,078. It's actually three cents more than what we wanted, but this is just how FTX takes limit orders. They don't let you get more precise than this fourth decimal place. So we need to be rounding to the fourth decimal place here to get as accurate as possible of price and size execution with whatever we specify here. And the issue with this is that the smaller you make this US dollar amount number, the less accurate your order size is going to be. So if you try to buy like $2, I don't think that it's going to work because $2 at four variables of Bitcoin price is just, it's a little too precise and it might end up rounding you down to zero. All right, guys. So it took a while there, but my order did fill. If I go to orders, you'll see that there are no open 
unlimited orders and if I go to order history, you can see that I had an order filled today, April 17th for the price that we talked about earlier and that 0 0.0005, obviously again, coming up to the fourth decimal, not letting us get any further out on that. So now if we go over to my wallet and we click on portfolio, we can see balances and we can see Bitcoin. I now have a, you know, 0 0.009, whatever balance. And you can actually see I've done 2.05 balances like we did just now. So if you multiply that balance that we just did uh, times two, you should see that it should be 0 0.001. But if we divide by what's actually in my wallet now, it's 0 0.009905. And so you can see that difference there is the 0 0.001 fee. And I actually got a little 0.5% discount because I signed up with someone else's code. And so if you want to use my code to get the same little 5% discount, so instead of 0 0.001, it's 0 0.00095, you can use the code that I'll leave down in the description. And if you wanted to share your code with anyone else, you would just click up here and click on referrals. And you could see that your current maker fee over here is, you know, whatever it is, because you use the discount code of someone else. And then if you wanted to make your own referral code, you would just type like YouTube referral here, and you would click on create and you could give this YouTube referral to anyone to lower your maker fee down beyond 0.095 here. But as you can see, this 0.095 is even lower than the 0.1% that we were getting at Gemini. And it's, you know, more than twice as small as the 0.2% that Gemini is currently offering. So next, let's head back into AWS here. And we'll talk about how can we automate this script so that we're buying not just once every time we click the test button, but that it automatically buys for us every day. And we don't have to ever deal with this again. We're going to come up here to services at the top of AWS. And we're going to search for event bridge. It's going to take you to this screen and you'll see rules over here on the left. And you'll also see this big orange create a rule button here. You can go ahead and click on this create a rule button and you can call this rule FTX by every day. And you can give this description whatever you want and you can click on schedule over here Then you're going to click next. So you can define with your own little cron expression here and they've actually made this a lot easier since I started making these videos or you can do something like I want to run this every you know 10 minutes or four hours or once a day. If you just want to be very basic, you can go ahead and do this here and be aware that when you create the rule for the first time, that will be the first execution. So if you do one days here right now, when you hit create, that will be day one. And then 24 hours from now will be the next time that the script executes. So I'm going to fill out one that I use pretty often. And that's just every day at 12 PM. So that's 12 day of month is going to be any day of the month. Month is going to be every month, day of the week. I don't care what day of the week. And then every year, and so you can see, you know, April 18th is going to do it. April 19th, April 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd. Just be aware that if you use star for day of month, you have to use question mark for day of week. And I think if you did the opposite, you know, it would also work. So let's do something a little more complicated here. If we did 15 comma 30 and then any day of the week, this is going to happen on the 15th and the 30th of the month. So the 30th of April, the 15th of May, the 30th of May, the 15th of June, and so on and so forth. So you can really play around with this as much as you want and dial in you know, as much precision as you want on this. I'm just going to leave it alone for now and hit next. For the target, we're going to click down here and we're going to click on Lambda function. And then we're going to select the Lambda function that we just wrote. So that's FTX crypto buyer YouTube demo. We'll hit next. We can leave the tags alone for now, but you could add tags to it if you wanted to. And then we'll scroll down here to the bottom and hit create rule. So now my rule is going to run on the 15th and the 30th of every single month. And that's how you fully automate your buys over here on FTX. This is currently the lowest fee way that I know of to buy and sell any cryptocurrency that's listed on FTX, you're getting those actually 0.95% fees if you use the discount code that's in the description. And so that's more than twice as good as Gemini. Okay, so obviously here at the end of the video, some of the things that I don't really like about FTX US, and you've seen some of them throughout this video so far. The first one is that whole rounding off to four decimal places thing. It makes it really hard for you to make the same small purchases that we did back in the Gemini API strategy. And I think it's even stupider because after you purchase the Bitcoin or whatever cryptocurrency, they do expand it out to more than four decimal places. So I don't know if it's something that is just a limitation with their API or why they do it like that, but you can't get as precise as you could with the Gemini API. My next issue that I have with FTX US is that currently via the iOS app, I don't know if this is the case over on Android, but FTX support has confirmed that over on the iOS app, you can't currently make recurring deposits of fiat from your bank account into FTX US. This is a big problem for me because over on Gemini, I 
have a fully automated system, right? I'm recurring deposits into Gemini, I'm recurring buys from Gemini, and then I'm making recurring deposits into my hardware wallet from Gemini. And right now at FTX, it's only possible, as far as I can tell, to make those purchases and then to transfer those coins off the exchange. But until recurring deposits come in, I'm personally just not that interested in FTX as a total strategy, even though the fees are a lot lower than Gemini's right now. Additionally, the FTX app is just really janky. It crashes whenever I click on payment methods it's overall just a much worse experience than using the Gemini app. I think we all took the Gemini UI UX for granted, especially just being in that ecosystem for so long and not seeing how these other exchanges in the cryptocurrency space, just how bad the user experience is. And then finally, if you are doing Ethereum or ERC-20 dollar cost averaging, it might just be cheaper to use Gemini because of those 10 free transfers a month rather than coming over to FTX, getting the cheaper fees, but then paying those withdrawal fees when you go to withdraw those Ethereum or ERC-20 tokens. So overall, I'm probably gonna be sticking to the Gemini API, at least for the time being. I might slowly move my dollar cost averaging over to FTX because the fees are much better, but I have a lot more stuff to implement on the FTX API, like recurring withdrawals and like moving all of my transactions into the spreadsheet. So until that kind of stuff is done, I'm gonna stick with Gemini just because that entire system already being set up for me and for a lot of you guys now is just really convenient and it's not really worth the switch over, you know, what is ultimately small amounts of money. However, I am going to be using FTX to execute some trading strategies that I've been working on in the background and I will make some videos on those in the future if you guys are interested. So overall, FTX does have the best fees of any exchange that I could find, but the user experience is just not as good as Gemini's in my opinion. And if you've already set up all of the stuff on Gemini, you might not want to go set up all the stuff again over on FTX. Hopefully this video was helpful for you guys and hopefully you guys save a lot of money on fees. If it was, go down below and smash the like button so that YouTube shares it with more people. Are you guys going to switch over to FTX? Do you think it's worth the lower fees to make the switch? I do still respond to all the comments and I am really interested in what you guys have to say on this topic. So definitely go down below and let me know what you guys are thinking. And then come back here every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern for a new video. I love you all. Goodbye.